Hey, it's a guy takeover. Hey guys, it's Ian Coyer. I got Scott LeBlanc, Tristan Banco beside me to my left, right? Yep. We are going to sit down and talk today. I wanted everybody to kind of get to know Tristan, um, who is our head trainer now. He's kind of taken over a lot of the operations upstairs. Um, I want to take the time to kind of get to know him, have some fun, talk some questions, talk all the bullshit, all the fun stuff. I'm sure Danny's going to edit out of here. But that makes it no more fun. Um, so I'll kind of start with the first thing first. So Tristan, what's been your experience here at the gym um, compared to other gyms? And then we can kind of go from there. Ah. Um, I guess the biggest thing is like stepping into a training facility that's, you know, we, at least we do our best to be organized. Um, I think a lot of gyms try and do their best at that. But what I've come to realize in the fitness space is like dealing with, you deal with so many different personalities everywhere you go and different training regimens and everybody has a way in their way, but it's not the way, yeah, you know? True. And I think here we're just trying to establish like our way. So like stepping into that and showing people that, um, you know, we have, we have the tools to create a good foundation and build on that foundation here has been a cool experience to be a part of. And it's taught me a lot, not just as a, as a coach and a trainer, but as a man for myself and building relationships with people in and outside of the gym. I agree. agree. No, dude, that's think getting into this gym, I get into fitness and I know Scott can back me up on this. I think the hardest part about this career is that every three to five years, any professional that does this for a living listening to this can can know things change. The field changes, new research comes out, you know, foam rolling is a big new thing, ART, fascia, like it's always constantly changing. So you have to kind of make up your mind on what are your fundamentals, what do you like to stick with, and then not be afraid to be open minded to whatever. Scott, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, the research is, is always changing, new things are always coming out. Things that we thought were a big deal are, are disproven or not the main, you know, sources of, of knowledge anymore. And so, it's, it's a constantly changing thing. But I think that, you know, one thing that is, is pretty significant for us is that we all have different backgrounds, and, and so we all bring a little bit something different to the table where we can learn from one another try new things and say, why do we think this works versus what's wrong with it and how can we fix it? So I think that um, the diversity here is is what kind of sets us apart as well and being able to do that. 100%, 100%. Tristan, I got another one for you. So you've been here for now, what, about a year and a half? Year and a half. Year and a half. So you've gone from coming in not really knowing how we do things. Obviously, you have a fitness background. You were in shape. You knew what you were talking about to a point. Um, like we all think we know what we're talking about to a point, right? But things have changed for you. And now you've taken this bigger step, bigger role as more of the head guy here. What do you see changing in the next one to three years for yourself in terms of like if you stay in this career? And I guess what are the things that you wish that you would have known? maybe a year ago about what you know now and then i guess my final little tidbit of that would be what what are you trying to get out of all this well i don't know i personally like hate the what's your one to three to five year plan because like i I think the last three years for me like i've had a plan or i've had an idea and it's just been completely changed in so many different ways because i've done so many different things and i don't think that's a bad thing in itself um, like I've, I've tried to, you know, take the steps forward to grow in a bunch of different areas and it's all taught me different things. So when I think about like, what is a, you know, what does the next one or three years look like for me? I hope it's that like, like I just keep learning and like I learn, you know, what the next step forward looks like. And then more than anything for me, what I think that's helped me to grow most as a, as a coach, a trainer, as a man, as a brother, as a friend is like, like put yourself in positions to be humble. Mm-hmm. Because it, it, it reminds you that, like, you don't know it all. Yep. And so, like, just the last year and a half from, like, different coaching avenues that I've taken, different clients that I've trained and people that I've talked to and groups that I've trained is, like, I don't know it all. The person that's 10 years ahead of me doesn't know it all. And the person that is just starting this and figuring out and getting their certification also doesn't know it all. Yep. But we can all teach each other different things through different perspectives or different ideas. Um so uh, right now I, you know, I continue to perceive myself, it's like see myself as continuing to grow as a strength conditioning coach and whatever comes with that. And I'm excited to like 
continue to meet people and build relationships and continue to learn and, and teach myself like more, um, like from a conversational aspect, but also to just anatomy, like yeah. actually learning what everything actually means. Cause I didn't come from a background from that. And it was actually very hard for me. Uh, there's a teacher that I had in high school, Miss Heron, um, she knows how much I absolutely hated biology. Oh. I hated science. And for some reason, my senior year, I got put into AP biology too. <laughs> and I was like, and I told her straight up from the beginning, I was like, look, this is going to be really bad for both of us. <laughs> and I studied my butt off for every test and made D's. There you go. And like, I hated it so much, but she saw that I was trying at the end of the year, I got a most improved certificate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And um, I mean, I remember ever since then, I was like, I hate this so much. Like I never want to do anything in this. Like I love talking to people, but you know, after getting through college and, and really developing a love for fitness, I was like, man, you know, I actually like this. I wish I would have had a love or I care for it more. I feel like if I would have cared more about it, I would have put forth the effort even though I didn't like it. Yeah. You know, and so now I have to. Right, right. But dude, it's kind of I mean, it's kind of fascinating. I think like did you change? I mean, when Scott and I knew each other a couple of years ago, the rafters, the what I wanted and what I want now is completely different. What I knew now, what I know now and what I knew is is so different than what I thought. I was so stubborn in so many ways and you know, I still am stubborn in a lot of ways. So I, I don't know, it's just fascinating that some people aren't into anything or even obsessed with the subject. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, they find themselves actually liking it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's like that. Your taste buds change what, every seven years or some shit. Seven and a half years. Like same seven, yeah. <laughs> you like the same food? food. Is this right. mute? No, dude. It's just, uh, I think you got to press the button if it goes uh, to mute. <laughs> I hope not. It's on mute. Yeah, That's good. Well, it looks yeah. like they're, yeah, looks they're like squigglies on okay. there. That's going to be a fun edit. Yeah. All right, Scott, what are your one question or two questions for Tristan? I'll have him to come up. That's him, bro. Come on. Man. We'll fly, dude. Um, you want to come back to you? I have questions for you. Yeah. yeah. All right, right, come on. Give me one. All right. We'll give you one. Oh, we're getting on the phone. Uh, to read. I have it written down. <laughs> I have it written down. Right I love here. it. I love it. All right. Um, ooh, the first one is so good. Let me ask the second one. Why the training ground? Oh, like the name, the business? Why? Yeah. Why Why? Why oh, the training shit. ground? Let's, uh, let's, yeah, we can break it. Break okay. It no, that's why, a, that's why a good the one. name? Why the training ground? So the name was random. The name was with me, Brett, and Greg. We're just sitting around. I think Brett, shout out Brett. I'll see you this weekend, buddy. Um, we kind of just came up with it. We stuck with it and went with it. You know, Scott was actually supposed to be a part of the training ground first, but thought we were psychopaths because we were looking at a building in Bozier that was way too big. It didn't have air conditioning. It didn't have air conditioning, but you know, Psycho. like, like for FOMO, right? <laughs> I didn't want anything to do with y'all. Y'all like, are crazy. Y'all are. But no, dude, so the, here's the part. The problem with training, what a lot of people don't want to admit, is one – I am a successful trainer in Treeport Bozier, as meaning I could go open up my own place, be by myself, do fine, have all these clients, blah, 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 work 10 hour days like I did for years. The problem is it's not sustainable. I'm 32 years old. I knew I needed to be a part of a system or a gym. I've always wanted my own gym with good partners that were I could go on vacation and my clients, our clients could get taken care of regardless. And I know 5 million people on that are listening to this podcast, like, Ian, you go on vacation all the time. Dude, life is short. You're supposed to go on vacation a lot. I don't believe in that whole two week crap. But point being is that I wanted something of my own that I started for myself. And that in itself, I think as a human, that is something we all crave. We all crave the desire to create something that is ours, whether it's offspring, money, whatever the case may be. So that would probably be why. Would I say that it was easy and there's been days where I haven't wanted it? I'd be a liar if I told you that wasn't true. Um, I think that's the hardest part about this business is there's most days I want it. Most days I want to run away and go back to just doing my own thing at any time and having my clients and, and doing that. I made a lot more money that way, but that's not the way to do it. In the long run, I wanted to have my own business, my own gym. And in all honesty, Tristan, as silly as it sounds, dude, and I know Scott can vouch me back on this, it is wonderful to have young guys, young humans under you that can like be 10 times better than you and know 10 times more than what you did because it's kind of cool to watch them succeed, especially with all the relationships we have here. And I think that's been the most uplifting thing for me is like, dude, I just look over and I'm like, I see you training somebody like Todd or somebody cool. And I'm just like, man, it's, it's just nice. Like it's, it's a safety net. It feel, I feel like I don't have anxiety when I go home about everything. You know what I mean? So, I mean, to sum up that question, there you go. 
So, Scott, you got one for Tristan? Come on now. I don't, I'm not, I can't even think of anything. <laughs> yeah, talking. All right. Well, that, go. lead, that leads into the third question I was going to ask. All so, right. the first one we'll come back around to. So, what are three characteristics that make up a good trainer? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, One. Just three. Consistency. 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 As meaning you show up on time, even if you're not the best, you're not the, you know, the most beautiful, the most knowledgeable, mm-hmm. whatever the case be, you're consistent. You show up on time. You're consistent with your clientele, even on the days where I know all three of us have had a terrible day every now and then, and you're still consistent with your client. You're still happy. You still make sure you provide the same quality. Consistency is key. Um, Two, I would probably say another characteristic is that you have to realize that in their 60 minutes or 45 minutes, it's all about them. It's their world. So as a trainer, you have to be able to create that virtual world for them. You, hello, Danny. You have to be able to create that atmosphere that they actually enjoy because, again, they're only here one to three times a week, maybe more, and you may be here for 12 hours, but that's their experience. Yeah. So if you can create that virtual whatever world for them and you can be consistent about it, you will fly. And then I think the third thing for the best trainer is a wise man knows himself to be a fool. Like you said earlier, dude, you're never going to know everything. I don't care if you're Eric Cressy. I don't care if you're the best of the best. You have to question everything and always make sure you're what you're doing is what's the best for the patient or the client. If you're not doing that, then I think you're doing yourself a disservice. Disservice. I can't talk. Good question. Can't talk. Can talk. I think I think one too that I would add on top of that that I learn in anything in life is relatability. Yeah. Um, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. like there's not really like a conversation to be had. Yeah. Because like, you know, we can go upstairs and say, "Hey, my name's so and so. I'm going to be your trainer today," and then just talk about this is what you're doing today. And then it's just like a lot of times you find find yourself being in an awkward position because like you can't sit there and stare at somebody forever like while they're doing a squat yeah. or yeah. a press or a pull. Like, but if you find that conversation piece, you kind of see their face light up a little bit and they're like, okay, like this isn't just an awkward, like somebody watching me work out. Like right. it's, it, there's more to it than, than fitness. You know, it's, it's about building that relationship. So we have people come back. And so we have our athletes that go off for the summer, come back to us or like, Hey, if you're finding, you know, if you're looking for a good place to train, you know, the training ground over in Shreveport is a great place and they have awesome people that work there, not just good programs good people yeah you know i mean like i know it sounds silly but like putt always talks about i mean he talked with me about this at 6 a.m in the morning it's all about your culture dude culture i mean your culture is important and what you what you provide and having fun and laughter but at the same time getting a product but i kind of you you said something earlier tristan that made me think about it and i think i wish i would have taken away all those points i told you and said to be a chameleon um i know it sounds stupid but like you have i can't tell you how many clients i've disagreed with or how many things I don't agree with, whatever the case may be. And you have to be able to kind of change your way per se to make sure that they feel comfortable, like you said earlier. And that is very difficult for most people is to kind of make it about them for that time being, even though sometimes you want to just walk away or go crazy. Mm-hmm. And I know Scott has experienced that with PT, I'm sure. Do you have to fucking become a chameleon pretty often? I'm a great chameleon. Um, it was good. so good that I gotta leave right now. Okay, so, bye, Scott. Bye, so, Scott. Um, um, I got a random here. I got a random another good question for you, me. So, let's say this: you leave here and go to the collegiate setting or some other type of job, or you've seen other gyms. What is the one thing? And I'll ask you it live because it's fun that we as a gym need to work at that maybe we don't have here that you see? Mm-hmm. I don't want to say it's something that we don't have. It could be equipment. It could be, yeah. it could be a, per, a personality. It could be maybe something that we lack here, something that you feel like we need that you randomly yeah. get irritated about and you think in the back of your head, man. Well, I mean, everybody's going to agree with space, right? I, I, think, I, I think when we were in that temporary building, like, yeah, it was dirty, it was dusty, but like, we had the same amount of clients that we normally would, but it felt like it was empty. Yeah. Like, well, where's everybody at? We had the same amount of people in there, but we just had so much more space to breathe. Yeah. Um, so like something that I've seen in like collegiate programs, you know, and like spaces is like one space. And obviously like equipment comes with that because, you know, the, when you have a higher demand for better training, it also comes with better equipment because we can only do so much. 100%, right. 100%. Like I can't put somebody like I know I talk about all the time, like I want an air runner. 
right, right, you know, because right, right. like they're so cool but like like i can't put somebody on the court out there and produce that same amount of speed because at some point the court stops right 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 or um like there's a bunch of different equipment we could talk about, but I think that's the beauty of like growth is like you work with what you have yep. and then one day you get to the point to where you get those nicer things, you know? Yep. Um, I don't think you should not commit to somewhere because they don't have the nicest stuff because oh, you can invest in the time to be able to achieve those certain things, you know? Yep. 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 Um, what else? So you said equipment. Equipment. Yeah. I mean, just what else do you see? I mean, because you've been around, dude, and you've now been around long enough. I mean, yeah. you know, you've, you've traveled enough, you've done enough, you know, certain events like, it's always a fun thing to ask people because it's like, that's the honest question. Is like, what else can we do to make it better? I mean, everybody can be more organized, yeah. obviously. Um, so that, yeah, that reminds me. So I, we do have this already, but I think for me, I thrive in a big group setting. Yeah. Like, I love when we work with our sports teams and stuff because I like, you know, I get to, you know, not necessarily be more uppity, but like being a coach over a whole group setting where we're kind of all doing the same thing. We're working as a team is fun for me. And that's why I like, I loved, you know, when I was a strength conditioning coach at the high school this past summer, like it was stressful having to program for that many people because you can't be as individualized as you can with a yeah. semi-private or one-on-one. Yeah. But like if you can create a program that meets the needs of of most of the needs of the whole group as an, in, in, uh, as an entire group, um, whether it's soccer or football or across, like what specific stuff they need, you know, then you get to have, to have fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, I love the group setting stuff. I love being a coach over a whole group, you know, um, and if collegiate was to ever be a thing for the future for me, like college football for me, yeah. would a hundred percent or baseball, like, cause I love being in that huge group setting, that hype setting, like, you know, and getting to see that put on a field mm -hmm. like here, you know, it's it's cool because we get to train people in the building, but we don't necessarily get to see how they utilize that out in mm -hmm, the space, mm -hmm. out, outside these walls, unless they come in and say, hey, I was able to do this because of this training here, you know. Right. right. So yeah. it's, that's, a, you know, I'm glad I did that in my career early on was I did a lot more coaching. And I think you probably needed to get some more of that in that big group setting um, because it's so uplifting. I think when you get point at a certain age though, it does get old. Um, not old, but like, you know, home and all that jazz takes over, but no, a hundred percent. I mean, dude, the big, the big team setting is always the best, man. It's the best part. I mean, I can't top not some of my top 10 moments in my life. I mean, one was with magnet lacrosse. It yeah. was with the stupid high school team. And I, I mean, it's the top 10 moment of my life, yeah. you know, and I, and it's just crazy how that affects you and, and influences your coaching career. Um, yeah, it's good. Good. Um, that's my yeah. you hey, last question. How much motivation does someone have to have to start their own business, especially a business in a very competitive fitness industry? Oh, ah, that's a multi-layered question. Um, how much motivation does someone have to have to start their own business? <sighs> I mean, I think you need to, I mean, excuse my French and I'm sure this will get edited, but I think you need to have the biggest balls in the world, whether you're <laughs> female, male, whatever you, whatever you are, like, it, it takes so much guts and so much that you're going to fail. Yeah. And I mean, if we think about it, when we go back in this business, this business has had now a couple other owners and I've been the only consistent one. And it's, it's rough. Like, I think you have to decide that you're going to set, you're going to lose a part of your life. You're going to lose social life. You're going to lose the partying side, you're going to lose maybe a part of yourself for a little while. And I don't know if people want to commit to that yeah. because it's not easy. Um, I think you need to be very smart about if you choose to go compete with somebody, like for instance, if we take this business and go to Dallas or yeah. LA, we would have a lot more difficult problems, but the beauty of what I've figured out the last couple of years is like being at CSP and West Palm and some other businesses, Dude, West Palm is a giant metropolitan, thriving fitness city of all kinds of athletes, but they found their niche, their niche. And I think we have kind of found ours here in Shreveport and the Arclitex. So I think you just have to do your research and then make your connections and then no offense, but like roll the dice. Yeah. Because you can be as consistent as you want to be. I mean, people still ask me how we survived COVID. Um, and how many gyms failed and went down. But I think you have to find your own little thing and stick with it and be prepared that once you do that, you will burn some bridges. And that's the other scary part is like, dude, if I were to move over to Dallas or whatever the case may be, I mean, do I think we can do it? Sure. Because of how different we are. And I think sometimes the Arclitex doesn't realize the our style is so much, it's just different compared to a lot of styles around here. 
in terms of our eval and individualization. But overall, I would just say, yeah, I mean, it, you, you need to be prepared to lose part of your life a little bit. And then it may not work out. Yeah. And you have to be okay with that. You know, and that's that's hard. I would rather Tristan go back. I would wish I would have gone rather. And I love my business partners that I got involved with, especially, you know, Brett and Greg were great. But I think I wish I would have done it. I and mean, you can't predict the future. But if you're going to get into a business and if you do it by yourself, cool. If you don't, you need to trust your business partners. And they don't need to be your best friends. Yeah. They need to be somebody you don't spend a lot of, per se, you know, social time with. But, like, you can trust them in and out. And that in itself, I think, is the hardest thing ever yeah. to find a good business partner. Wow. Um, but I will say, I know you're not planning on leaving and doing another gym because if not, I'll come out. <laughs> I'm messing with no, I'm but, messing up. I'm with yeah, you. Just, yeah, adding one more thing to that, just thinking about, like, I, f- I feel like if every time that we made a risk and we succeeded, it would just eventually come with either a lot of pride or a lot of complacency, yep. you know? So like, I, th- I think going into it with that mindset of like risk can, can have the outcome of failure or success being a good thing. Because like, if you take the risk and you succeed, then we keep taking steps forward. Mm-hmm. But if you always keep taking steps forward at some point, it's going to be like, okay, well, we're the best in the business. You know, like we don't need help from anybody else. We provide the best product. We don't need to learn from anybody. And then it becomes like, you know, like, like, what are we learning for? What, what are we taking all these steps for? Like, where are we eventually going to? Because I like, I feel like if you're not taking those setbacks, you don't get to learn another way to do something or you don't get to relate to people because you know it all. Correct. hundred you know? percent. Yeah. So like, I think it's good that risks come with failure sometimes, even though it sucks, setbacks suck. You yeah. know, we have clients to deal with that all the time, but we get to remind them that, you know, setbacks mean that you get to take steps forward. Yep. Yep. You know, other, other, otherwise, what, what are we, what are we doing this for? Where, what are we trying to achieve? Dude, fail, know, failure yeah. is the best teacher, right? I mean, how many times have you failed in your life? I, hate, so, I mean, I me hate, too. I, I mean, mean, we all do, but you <laughs> know, that's a, whole, that's a whole nother conversation too, yeah. dude. Is like a lot of these newer kids and high school kids that I've talked to, I think failure is not, it's not looked upon as a good thing. Yeah. And I think that's something we need to change is that failure is very, very important. Mm-hmm. And I mean, most of the best decisions of my life have been because I've made a mistake. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, nobody's perfect, but dude, I can't, I mean, I can go on a tangent about how many mistakes I've made here and yeah. mistakes I've made with just as part of it. But well, it's bad for my generation and the ones before me. And, and it's, I, I guess it's really getting bad with the ones in front of me too, is like we live in a, you know, participation trophy generation. Like, like everybody gets something for trying. And I a hundred percent believe, and I tell you all the time, I want you to try. Like when I tell clients, like, show up i don't mean just get here right i mean when you get here actually show up you know because like I, I don't believe in participation trophies sure because like i want everybody to put forth their best effort and know that you're not always going to be on top yeah. there's somebody that's always going to be better than you faster than you smarter than you but that allows us to all like i said before learn from each other you know like i don't want to be the best at everything because because yeah. i don't want i don't want everybody to come to me and then me fail somebody yeah. because like I, I was supposed to know it all yeah. you know yeah. there's always so, a bigger fish dude i mean yeah. i I don't know, dude. It's just even being around all those big pro guys and being around some of the best trainers and guys in the world, watching them fail or watching them screw up something so small or so simple or something they were just terrible at yeah. was such a good thing. And I think a lot of these younger athletes and younger people listening to this, they don't realize that most of those people you look up to, dude, they have failed. They suck at something. They are not yeah. the most perfect human beings you think they are. And just that's that's i wish more people would accept failure yeah i hate it too yeah but it's I, it's a love-hate relationship actually so funny funny story so like uh, ian respects crossfit now yeah but he yeah. doesn't necessarily that's like fair. like it but i was uh, at my my crossfit gym this past week and i was talking to somebody um who's more like we would call an intermediate athlete somebody okay. that doesn't have like they're not very proficient at like bring muscle ups sure. or bar muscle ups or all the gymnastic stuff. And like, there was a guy in there, he was getting really discouraged about it. And I stopped him for a second. Um, and I was like, look, one thing that has kind of like pushed me forward in anything, CrossFit, SNC, like any kind of movements or just like normal everyday goals that people achieve is like, look at the people that have done it and all the hard work that they've put in. And if you think that you can just step up to the plate and achieve what they have, it's almost disrespectful because it's like, look at all the hard work that they put in and for you to think that you can just step in out of nowhere and and know it all and achieve it all is like 
discrediting all the hard work that they put in mm-hmm. over the last few mm-hmm. 15, 10, 5, 10, 15 years, whatever it is, however long it's taken for them just to get to the point that they're at. And you were in the relationship with them. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, like, like everybody has to put the effort in to be able to get to where they want to. Otherwise, it's like, what, what, what are we doing? Oh, 100 percent. You know, like I, I would never want to like. Like imagine if I would have stepped into here after you hired me and been like, I already know that. Yeah. I already know that. Yeah. I already know that. It's like, well, if you're not in a in a headspace to want to learn, like you're never you're 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 never gonna really be successful because huh. you're, you're mentally you're already like, you're, you're already you've already won. Yeah, right? yeah, like, so what's so, the point? Yeah. Dude, I mean again, I hate going back to it, but I, you know, I need to do a whole podcast about CSP as an intern one day. Dude, I was the oldest intern. Yeah. Like I was the oldest guy there by a good 10 years. I own my own gym. Like, I was the only intern there, I think, other than maybe Carlos that was working on his own gym. And, like, I just made myself sound stupid. <laughs> I know it sounds stupid. Like, I was going to take in everything because I had guys at 22, 23. I mean, I'll never forget. We had a guy there named Declan. Dude, the guy was a freak. He knew more anatomy. He knew more. I mean, and, and we butt heads a little bit, but the dude was so knowledgeable that I always, every day I was watching and just trying to learn something, even though there were little bit of things that would drive me nuts. Yeah. Esteban, Andrew, all those guys are like, you, you got, you cannot come into a picture with, you know, it all. And I have, I have done it. I have made the mistake of doing that. And it has eaten, it has beat me up and pushed me down and thrown me up. And I'm not going to do that anymore. I have to be careful about that. Yeah. That's sometimes like with you, I'm trying to always not act like I know it all. I mean, there's times and points where I'll say something just to be like, no, that's what this is. Let's move on and move forward. But like, dude, the whole CrossFit thing, right? I, before Tristan, if you asked me about CrossFit, I would shit on it so bad. (laughs) And I still shit on it so bad for so many ways. But I had to learn that you've got to have respect for a different sport just because you disagree with it. There are so many strength coaches in rugby, basketball, all these places that completely disagree with the way they train. People hate back squats. People hate deadlifts. Back squats are still great. Deadlifts yeah. are still great. There's still problems with yeah. them. And I think that's one thing you taught me, especially as like a leader or whatever you want to say, was that you came in as a young buck with all this CrossFit knowledge and whatnot. And you didn't really bear it on anybody, but you did a really good job of letting people understand what it is. And I got to learn a little bit more of it, respect it more and realize that it's not terrible. It's, yeah. it's just, it's just because you disagree with something does not make it terrible. Yeah. And I, I think that in itself, if more people just took that principle and applied it to all places in their life, yeah, which did, we'd be a lot happier. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah. whatever it is, like whatever you choose to do, fitness is for everyone. hundred percent. Fitness, 100%. fitness, fitness in itself is for everyone. And everyone should do fitness, yep. whether it's like you getting up and out of your chair multiple times a day just to get movement in, or you just to go walk around the block or like to establish like somewhat of a fitness routine in your life instead of just being, I can't ever say this word right. Sedentary. Is that right? Sedentary. Yeah, I can well, never say that word. Right. Like instead of just like or sitting on your butt. <laughs> or <for> dyslexic <laughs> Instead of like <laughs> sitting down all the time and being lazy, like it's, it's, that's probably my biggest pet peeve. There's three huge pet peeves of mine. And one of them is laziness. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, and that goes for anybody. I don't, I, and I feel like it's not a disrespectful thing, but I feel like these days if you call somebody lazy. It's like a, yeah. whoa, you know, being lazy, you know, being late, yeah, like, being late, and, yeah. and, you know, not, not, not being true to, to what you, what you claim. It's just like, yeah. Yep. You know, so. And it's, it, did you got to go back to those principles it's all the time and we'll always have to be reminded of them and do them. But I think the coolest part is that we're all trying to grow. We're all trying to listen. Yeah. I mean, I can, the silly as it sounds, you and I can sit here and talk on this podcast and talk about shop and realize yeah. that we're trying to make it better. But in reality, we're, we're everybody here is just trying to figure it out. Yeah. And if we, if, as long as we accept that, dude, we'll be fine. That's just, that's just the fun part. But, um, Questions, concerns, comments. You got anything else? No. Yeah. Guys, um, this was fun. If you want to hear more, have any more questions for Tristan or for I, please let us know. We may try to do this once a month because um, I enjoy talking to him. We'll get Scott on here because I think it's really important for a lot of the younger people here to listen because he's, again, taking a huge step in um, to this business. And it's going to be – he's a huge part of us. And it's cool to watch young people – succeed it's cool to watch young people take a leadership role um because it's it's difficult um but y'all go follow tristan on social media i'm sure he's got just banco all his stuff on there i'm sure danny will put some show notes as always i'm ian coyer with the training ground this is tristan banco scott left um we enjoyed it happy monday everybody and i we will talk to you guys soon see ya